In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys three unique transitions that will take your editing game to the next level. All I ask is if you guys wanna see more videos like this, make sure you guys just hit that subscribe button down below and let's get into the video. So once you have your comp all set up and you have your two clips and where you want the transition to be, then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this bottom clip above the top one and then we're gonna grab this top one and drag it over bottom one. We're gonna do the same thing on the bottom of this one. On this top clip, we're gonna go the end of this bottom one and we're going to control c control v and then we're just going to cut this layer up we want this top layer right here to be rotoscope so the next thing we're going to do is if your footage is a different frame rate than the comp what you want to do is want to right click click new put on a null object clean this null object up and then we're going to grab the null and that top clip right click pre-compose we're just going to name it top roto and then we're just going to clean this up do is we want to click on it go up to your roto brush tool and just double click on the layer and it'll bring you into the panel where you can rotoscope you guys don't know how to rotoscope there's plenty of tutorials um for this part i'm just gonna fast forward it so once you have this top layer rotoscoped out in this case it is a very quick just tutorial rotoscope it's pretty bad once you've done that we want to grab this bottom clip and we want to put it above the first clip so it's behind the rotoscope. And then from here, we wanna click on it. We're gonna click S for scale. We're gonna keyframe the scale. And then from here, we want it to start out at three on the transition. We want it to go all the way to 100. And in just this case, this is a 1920 by 1080 comp, but these clips are 4K. So in this case, we would go to 50. But for some of you, it'd probably be 100. And as you can see, it zooms in on the screen. And as you can see, if it is too slow and you want it to be faster, all you'd have to do is grab the first keyframe, bring it closer and then cut this up. We're gonna highlight these keyframes. We're gonna easy ease them. We're gonna go into the graph editor. And in this case, I'm in speed graph or you can do it in value graph. It does not matter. Value graph wise, we're just gonna click on these, hold shift, drag this all the way over, drag this one all the way over also. So it starts off really slow, goes really fast. Now for this top one, because it starts right here, we don't actually need it to be that long. We can trim this up. So from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on scale. We're going to click on P position. We're going to put keyframes for those. And we can also throw in some rotation also. Once you've done this, we're just going to click U to bring up all the keyframes. We're going to go ahead in the timeline. And all we're really going to do is just have them kind of keyframed off the screen. So for rotation, we're going to turn them a little bit. And then we're going to scale them up. And then we're just going to grab him and put him off to the screen. Play that back. Here, we don't really need the row scope this far. So all you gotta do is just trim this up. One thing I forgot is right here on this, check these little boxes for motion blur. This will give you the really cool motion blur. You get this really cool, simple mass transition that will definitely boost your transition game to the next level. If you guys wanna step up your transitions game, make sure you guys go check out my transitions pack for After Effects down below in the link in the description. So this is the car dance transition. It's a really cool particle transition that will definitely add some really cool spice to your videos so to make this transition the first thing we want to do is we want to highlight both of these right click click pre-compose move these all in the new attribute and we're just going to click ok you can probably name it i'm not being very organized right now what you want to do is right click click new adjustment layer go up to your effects and presets and type in card dance we're gonna grab that card dance, put it on the top inside this adjustment layer. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to gradient layer one and put this to our actual footage. What we're gonna do is we wanna right click, click new camera. And for this camera, we wanna have it around 50 millimeter. Click OK. Go back to our card dance layer and go down to where it says camera system. We're gonna put this to comp camera. Pretty much just connects this camera to the footage. We wanna go up to Z position and we're gonna open this up. And for the source, we're gonna put it to intensity one. And as you can see, the card dance already started to happen. And then we're gonna go up to the rows and columns. This is pretty much just how big or small the squares will be. In this case, we're gonna do 300 for each. On the Z position, we're gonna go to the multiplier and offset, and we're gonna keyframe this. We're gonna click these little stopwatches, click U on your layer to bring them up. On the transition, we're gonna put the multiplier to 12, and then we're gonna put the offset, offset no, hey. to 1.2. 
And what this pretty much is doing is for the multiplier, when you move this up, it pretty much brings the particles more into Z, Z space. Once you got this far, we're gonna go back in the timeline a couple frames and we're gonna put this to zero. And then we're gonna put the offset to zero. And then we're gonna go ahead in the timeline and we're gonna highlight these both zero keyframes and put them there. So pretty much starts right here ends right here next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to the y position and we're going to put this to intensity one also and then on the multiplier we're going to put this to three and then we're going to put, click this little stopwatch click u on your keyboard to bring that keyframe up go back to where it started and put this to zero go ahead to where these other keyframes are and put it to zero and we're just going to clean this layer up we're just going to cut that and then cut this right there. Once you got this far, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna ease these keyframes. So we're just gonna highlight all of them and click F9, easy ease, whatever your, your easy ease is. And for this card dance transition, it does not require any plugins. So anybody can do this. Obviously, if you do have plugins, you can make it look a little cooler. So one little thing that will make this look way smoother is if we go to our pre-comp and we open this up, if we double click on it, and we go to where the transition is. If we grab that top layer and bring it out a couple frames, click T to open up the opacity. We're gonna click this little stopwatch. We want it 100% on the transition. And then we go to the end right here and put this to zero. It'll have a way smoother transition into the car dance transition. So that is the basics of how you do this car dance transition. If you wanna take it a step further, if we go to our effects and presets and we type in warp, or we just put in WA and we look for warp right here inside distort. If we grab warp, put it onto our layer, go to warp style and put it to fisheye. And then on the transition, we're gonna keyframe the bend. And we're gonna put this all the way to negative 100. Click U on the adjustment layer twice. And then we go to the end right here and we put this to zero. And then at the end, we put this to zero. Highlight those, click easy ease. So once you gotten this far, you should have something that looks like this. Now, if you guys want to take this transition a step further and add some more effects to it, I would definitely recommend putting on some sort of glow. And in this case, it is part of a plugin, but I'm going to use my favorite glow, deep glow. You can use any types of glow. What I would do is I would just keyframe the glow amount and then go to the beginning, put it to zero, go to the end, put it to zero. For the next transition, I'm going to show you guys that it really utilizes that mass transition. So again, we're going to repeat the process. Once you guys have your comp and you have your two clips all set up on this top clip, we want to have the subject come in before the actual video. So to do that, all we have to do is we're just going to drag this out a couple frames. Once you've dragged it out, we're going to go back to the transition and we're going to cut this up. From here, we're going to right click, click new, null object, and this is for rotoscoping. So once you have the video and the null object, we're going to repeat the process. We're just going to right click, pre-compose, move all attributes in, and we're going to put this to subject only. Once you've done that, we're going to click on it. We're going to go up to our roto brush, double click on it. We're just going to rotoscope the character out. Again, if you guys don't know how to roto brush, there's plenty of roto brush tutorials. <laughs> If you have the subject cut out, you should have something that looks like this, where the subject comes in before the second clip. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn it into a 3D object. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to click S for scale. We're also going to click P for position. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to click U to bring these up. And then for the scale, we're going to put this to 25 at the beginning. And then for the position, we're going to move this down out of screen. Next, we're going to go to the middle to the clip or just right after the middle. And we're going to bring this up to 75. And then we're going to bring this up to back to where it was at 540. And then at the very end, this is where we want to have the default value. So we're going to put this to 100. And then for the position, it is all right. For the position keyframes, we're going to highlight those like easy ease. We're going to go into the graph and we're going to go right click and click on speed graph. And then we're going to bring these over to that so it has it comes in really quick same thing for the scale we're going to highlight those and then we're going to go into the speed graph and then we're going to put the start the same as the position pretty much just drag these two over to the left and then drag these over to the right comes in really fast and then it goes out really quick also we're going to go over to the motion blur checkbox and we're going to check that on the next thing we're going to do is why we made it a 3d object is we're going to go into the values and for the Y rotation, we're going to keyframe that. We're going to have that at zero, and then we're going to go to the middle or just past the middle. And then on this little number right here, we're going to put this to one, 
meaning it just does one full rotation. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight those, do the same process, easy ease them, go into the graph, and we're gonna bring these over to the left. For this second clip right here, we're gonna control C, control V, and then we're gonna drag this out. You can really put this wherever you would like. I think right here on these middle markers is where it will look the best. So from here, we're just gonna clean that up and then we're gonna put it below the subject and then go right here, clean this up. Or this clip right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to, pos uh, not position, scale. We're gonna click on the scale keyframe and right now 50 is 4K footage in uh, 1920. So it's at 50%. For some, most of you guys, it'll be 100. So we wanna put this to the end and then we wanna scale this down to around three. And then we're just gonna highlight those easy ease go into here and on this one we're going to go to the right and then make sure the motion blur checkbox is on and then you should have something that looks like this that brings us to the end of the video if you guys learned something new today and you guys want to see more videos like this make sure you guys just hit that subscribe button and drop a like and i'll see you guys in the next video